Our story begins in June of 1561, in the bustling city of Cadiz on Spain's Atlantic coast. It is from here that many set out to brave the challenges of a new world. For it is said that beyond the Atlantic, fame and fortune awaits the fearless and the brave. It is this hope which one day leads a young man to embark on a long journey after a number of hapless years. But hope has the most powerful enemy, fate. And so it comes to pass that the ship is beset by a terrible storm, but a few days' journey from the new world. The storm damages the ship severely, and a huge wave sweeps the young man overboard. The next morning, he awakes, senses befuddle, and all hope gone. But this time, fate proves gracious, for the accident took place on the busy trade route between St. Augustine and Port Royal. And so the young man, clinging to life with the last remains of his strength, is rescued by a Spanish merchant ship. Delighted that they were able to rescue a fellow countryman. The ship's sailors listen avidly to news from the home they have not seen in so long. An elderly passenger mingles with the sailors, and his eyes light up when he hears of the young man's origins, for he too is from Cadiz. His name is Pedro de Vega, and he is the Spanish Viceroy's commercial attaché. It is at his side that the young man enters the new world, breathing deeply of its heady scent. Here, his dream of a better life will be fulfilled. Of that, he is sure, and his newfound friend promises to help him along. Welcome to Port Royal. This is your hometown for now, in which you already even own a warehouse. You can adjust the level of magnification and the camera angle at will. The city view shows all of the buildings in the city. These include action buildings, homes and businesses. At first, the action buildings are most important for you. They are always in the center of town. You can enter them to perform certain actions, such as here in the dock, the most important building. This is where all of the trading for the entire city is done. If you have a convoy in port, you can select it directly. This displays data on the convoy on the right. Note, convoys consist of one or more ships and have a captain. More on that later. To send your convoy out, you must first leave town and go to the nautical chart. Here all the cities you know are shown. You can adjust the area shown and zoom level just the same as in the city. Select a destination city for your convoy and then select Send Convoy Here. Now you can see which route your convoy will take. If you have nothing else to do, you can also speed up time. Once your convoy has arrived in another city, you can then trade there. You can either enter the city or trade directly between the city and your selected convoy. In the trading window, the goods on board your convoy are displayed on the right. In order to sell them, select the goods and move the slider towards the city. Then, confirm the trade. I will explain the significance of the prices and quantities displayed later.
I now want to tell you more about products and prices. Most importantly, there are 20 different commodities, and each commodity is required in every city. But any one city can only produce a maximum of five. The commodities must therefore be traded between cities. Most of this is done by the many traders you meet at sea. When a city produces a commodity, they usually also end up with surpluses, which you can buy cheap. If you then sell them somewhere where that same commodity is scarce, you will receive a much higher price. In the beginning, these trading profits will be your main source of income. In the trading window, those commodities which can be produced in the city are marked. The current stock of the commodities will also be displayed. Remember, only buy when two or more bars are showing and only sell at less than two bars. For example, Port-au-Prince produces sugar and therefore often has a large amount left over for export. If you buy this product now, the displayed price per barrel may change because the more goods you buy, the scarcer that commodity is in the city. This can lead to the price rising sharply because it is always subject to the law of supply and demand. So always watch both the price and the stock of any given commodity. Although Port Royal produces no sugar, it does need some for its citizens and rum production. And indeed, the price of sugar is actually higher than the average price paid. Of course, the law of supply and demand also applies when selling a product. Therefore, the price of a given commodity may drop when selling. So always watch both the selling price and the stock of the commodity traded before you confirm the trade. Incidentally, if a city is lacking too many commodities, its citizens will become dissatisfied. You can view the current satisfaction in the city information. It is also influenced by events. This is also where your popularity in the city is displayed. Selling scarce goods helps to raise it. Only your convoy's escort ships take part in any naval battle. This allows you to maintain control of your ships no matter how large your convoy is. During battle, you always control one ship directly. To fire, you have to get an opponent into your cannon's firing range. A crosshair then appears under the opponent. Ideally, it will glow green. When firing, 
only the side which can actually hit the target is fired. As soon as you fired a broadside, the loading status of the currently selected ammunition will be displayed up here. Each broadside has its own loading bar. The loading time depends on how many sailors are on board the ship. You can change your ship's ammunition at any time. Solid balls do the most hull damage, chain shot is good against sails, and canister shot reduces the opponent's crew. On the left, you can see how much ammunition is on board. Solid balls are always present, but you must buy chain shot and canister shot in the cities. This also applies to exploding barrels, swords and muskets. You can drop explosive barrels at the touch of a button. They have a time fuse and explode on contact. If you have enough sailors on board, you can also try to board a ship. But for this to work, the enemy ship cannot be moving too quickly. Therefore, you must either destroy its sails or force it into the shallows, where it must slow down. Importantly, your ship cannot fire while in boarding mode. While you are controlling your ship directly, your other ships will operate independently, but you can still give them tactical commands. These are attack my target, support, and swarm out. Be careful with that last tactic. It leads all your ships to surrender, and the battle ends, which can have dramatic consequences for your convoy. One more thing. You can reef your ship's sails just by pressing a button. This will slow your ship and give it a tighter turning radius, which can sometimes give you a tactical advantage.
you are sure to have noticed this area of the HUD. Your current cash balance will be displayed here. Above that is your current rank and your progress towards advancement to the next rank. Initially, progress is determined solely by your assets, whereby those assets consist not only of your money, but also your buildings, ships, and goods. As your wealth increases, so does the progress bar. Once it is completely filled, you progress on to the next rank. This is important because you can only perform certain actions once your rank is high enough. For example, you must have a certain rank to speak to architects and governors. You can see what you still need for the next rank in your logbook. It also contains a great deal of other useful information, such as your current reputation among the different nations. But I will tell you more about nations and your reputation later. For now, the important thing is that you attain the next rank. In the beginning, it will be easiest for you to do so by trading. An example, Port Royal produces rum, for which they require sugar while Port-au-Prince produces sugar, but no rum. Santiago could use both, and has wood to offer. This is ideal for a small three-legged trade.